While we all need to improve our Apex game in different ways, our rank can tell us a lot about where we are in skill level and where we might be lacking. What's up guys, it's Valued, and today we're gonna break down those weaknesses and talk about common mistakes that players in every single rank make. No matter your rank, I know I'm gonna touch on things that will help you improve drastically. So stay tuned and let's get right into it. Starting us off, we're gonna talk about bronze and silver. These two ranks have a lot in common and most of the mistakes these players make stem from a lack of game knowledge. And this starts to affect you before you even leave the dropship. A big mistake my bronze and silver friends make are picking poor drop spots. This might seem like a simple part of your game, but in reality, if you don't have a good understanding of what areas are hot based on player habits and the trajectory of the dropship, you can have a really hard time getting rolling in your games. If you're constantly just dropping to POIs close to the dropship, or maybe trying to drop to further areas and landing late, you will have a lot of your games where you're contested off drop. And if you're really struggling to get out of bronze and silver, you should avoid trying to take these fights off drop. If it's just one team and you can play around them to get a clean fight, it can always work out just fine. But as we all know, in this ranked season, oftentimes it's more than just one team, especially in this elo. Rather than putting a ton of pressure on yourself to beat a squad or two off drop every game, focus on finding a safe drop, looting up, and playing out the game comfortably. The next mistake a lot of bronze and silver players make is not understanding which weapons are most powerful and feeling comfortable with them. While it's great to have guns you like, if you're passing up powerful guns to run the RE45 because you enjoy using it, that's not going to bode too well for you. Some weapons pop up that are really strong, like the Triple Taken Season 11 or the Peacekeeper and Mastiff this season as well. Knowing these weapons are strong and working them into your arsenal can do wonders for your damage output and your overall rank. And the last mistake I want to touch on for my bronze and silver friends out there is not having your settings dialed in. While things like sensitivity can be preference based, there are some performance and gameplay settings that have got to be changed if you want to give yourself an edge. A lot of players in this elo don't have great systems or they don't take enough time to get their settings right. From gameplay options that can help you outplay in fights to graphical settings that can make it way easier to see your enemies, your settings can make a huge difference and they literally take nothing at all. I can't take the time to dive into all of them in this video, but be sure to check out our recent best in-game setting video when you finish this one where I walk you through every major setting that you should change. And if you're looking for exactly what you should change in your gameplay, be sure to check out the coaching over at ProGuides.com. Look, videos are a great way for me to give you advice and tips on how to be a great player. But the coaches over at ProGuys.com can take it one further in a one-on-one -on -one session going over your gameplay and identifying your weaknesses and setting you up to succeed. So if you really feel like you're struggling and want to rank up today, make sure to check out the top link in the description below. Alright guys, moving on to one of the most populated ranks in the game, Gold. Here, players usually have a pretty decent understanding of the game itself, but sometimes their skewed knowledge of the game can actually come back to bite them. A good example of this is when players try to do too much. When you're climbing through gold, you have enough of an understanding of the game and you've been grinding enough that you're really starting to care in your matches. And while you cared when you were in bronze and silver, now that you're in gold, reaching high elo seems like a real possibility. But this mindset is at the root of gold player's biggest weakness issue, and that's trying to do it all. We all know our solo queue teammates can be underwhelming at times. So it's tempting to try and feel like you have to carry your team in every way possible. This really hits gold a lot harder than other ranks because you need to start using teamwork to find success. But rather than feel like you have to make every call in comms and lead every fight and carry your team in every aspect, gold players should focus on their individual play while providing useful information for your squad. If the comms are dead, feel free to suggest a rotation, but you don't have to be the one babysitting your team. 
This will only lead to more stress for you, and a lot of players at this level should focus on their own play more than what their teammates are doing. So be a good teammate, but don't feel like you have to lead every single game. Play your game, focus on your strengths and weaknesses, and your games will go a lot better. Now, this next one is a quick one, because all you gold players know you're guilty of this. Quit hot dropping. If you want to push to plat and beyond, you can't afford to be losing RP from dying off spawn. While you can totally play a contested drop, if you're dropping to a spot knowing it's going to be chaotic, you just aren't doing yourself any favors. Gold is where you really need to dial in your RP habits, and this is a bad one that you should definitely get rid of. Speaking of bad habits, a lot of gold players have really bad loot prioritization. Building a strong loadout and balancing your inventory to always have ammo, heals, and grenades is a must. Now, this sounds obvious, but you don't need to have 400 ammo or three stacks of syringes. Stick to about 240 ammo for your main weapon, a stack or two for your secondary, depending on what it is, a stack or two of white heals, cells, bats, and leave room for a nade or two, depending on what backpack you have. I won't spend long here, but the gist is, don't spam your bags with ammo because, guys, let's be honest, you're not shooting 400 bullets before you can find more. Now for those who have made it into plat and are on the grind to the coveted diamond. You're starting to get pretty good at the game, but refinement is needed. So let's talk about some common mistakes in platinum. Platinum is where we start to feel really good at the game. Usually have solid aim, good movement, and a lot of experience by this point. But all of this can lead to you playing more confident than you should be. With all the movement tech you know by this point, and how much practice on your aim you have, it can be easy to feel like you can win any situation. This can lead to you being overconfident, leading to you overextending, playing without your team, and overall putting yourself in a bad situation. It's important to notice this habit if it's something you struggle with as this can lead to not only you performing poorly, but also not fully realizing that it is you performing poorly. At this stage in your rank grind journey, keeping the learner's mindset and critiquing your own play is more important than ever. So don't let your overconfidence affect your individual games or your growth as a player. Now, another mistake that I see a lot of plat players making is taking too many fights. Guys, let's be real. If you're in plat, you likely have played with someone or you are this way yourself. And this can stem from that overconfidence issue that we just talked about. But it also comes from a lack of understanding of how to climb RP. While you need to get kills to get good RP, taking too many fights really messes up your games. If you're just blindly pushing those shots you hear or playing outside of the ring for those fights, you're just gonna die more often. While you might win a few, so many of these fights lead to third parties or you being out of position for the coming zone. Instead of chasing these fights, play for zone position and take fights where you know you have a team isolated and then play for the placement bonus. You will have even more grounded fights and gain more RP from staying alive longer in each game, as obvious as that sounds. The last big mistake I'm going to talk about for Platinum is a really important one. Look, just because at this point you learned how to do a lot of cool movement the game has to offer doesn't mean you have to use it all the time. So many Platinum players get tied up trying to do those sweet moves they see their favorite streamer pulling off. But in many cases, it's much better to have one or two key movements than it is to try to pull off crazy stuff. Less is more when it comes to these things and knowing exactly when you should be using these mechanics is more important than performing them. If you struggle with this one, make sure to check out our most recent movement video where we dived right into this concept. Moving into diamond, we're officially getting into some high elo. This is where you really have to fine tune your play because to go up from here, your competition is stiff, especially early in the season. At this point, your mechanics have got to be on point and only in the back of your mind, and your focus needs to be on learning the game at a high level on a macro level. And the best way to have consistent performance is to plan. A lack of planning at all stages of the game will hold you back from becoming a top tier player. This is especially important when it comes to setting yourself up for the mid to late game. 
If you're constantly chasing teams and rotating late, you're gonna have a really hard time. Teams will punish you in this rank for being late to a ring, and you can straight up lose games off a simple thing as not moving 60 seconds earlier. Every single round that the ring changes, you should be mapping out your team's movement, making a plan, and getting moving. This will keep you well positioned, have you taking even more fights, and propel you into the later stages of the game. A simple communication that you should go to a nearby POI better positioned for the ring, or explaining what specific high ground you want to hold, can be the difference maker in these games. Everyone in these lobbies are good at the game, and many of them are grinding for Masters and Pred, and sometimes you'll actually be in Masters and Pred lobbies. This is where your view of the game, positioning, and execution mean more than anything. And when you're in lobbies where everybody's a threat, you have to assert yourself as one too. While you don't want to be overly aggressive, pushing around the map after teams, if a team does try to push you off a good position that you have, or you see a good spot to fight, you need to be able to take those advantages. While you shouldn't lose the tactics that helped you climb here, you need to make sure you're confident and a threatening player in these lobbies. If you allow your enemies to bully you around without fear of them going down, teams will sense that lack of damage being returned and look to aggress on you. But if they get cracked instantly after taking shots at you, they'll think twice about making that push. So in these games, make sure you assert yourself, make teams fear your position, and create a danger zone around you that no one wants to walk into. Your experience, knowledge, and skill need to come together and deliver in your gameplay. From hearing an enemy push and perfectly timing a counter peek, to knowing you're about to get third partied because of a team you saw nearby a few minutes ago, and even to predicting where the ring is going to move, this all comes together as your overall game sense. And this right here is what can catapult you to masters, and if you're good enough, you can actually get to the height of predator just with good game sense. But many players lack this special sauce that lets a lot of players become really good. But guys, I'm going to let you in on a secret. It's not a secret sauce at all. Some of it might be mechanical for sure, but most of it is simply the better players having better mindsets and understanding of the game. Top level players have developed a healthy and smart way of viewing the game that lets them adapt to changes quickly and maintain a mastery of the game as a whole. They keep a level head and stay objective about the game rather than getting used to doing certain things or forming bad habits. And you can do all of this too. It's just a matter of keeping the right mindset and putting the time in with your constant improvement as the goal. And if you ever get the opportunity to, try to learn from better players than yourself. What do they do right that wins them games? And what do they do wrong that loses them games? You should always be trying to learn from players who are higher level than you. This is one key piece of advice that I would recommend to everybody no matter what rank you are. Alright guys, listen up. I've got faith that no matter where you find yourself ranked, you can improve one part of your game at a time until you reach whatever your goals may be. Each rank has its own tendencies and weaknesses, and while it's not universal, hopefully this helps you guys pinpoint advice to your specific ranked situation. We touched on a lot of mistakes today, and if you fix even just one the next time you hop into the game, I will be so happy. As always guys, it's been your boy Valued, let me know in the comments which tip helped you guys the most today, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.